Hello, and welcome back to the course on classical electromagnetism. So we are now on the third lesson of the fifth chapter. So before we proceed, let us review some concepts. So in our discussion with electric fields in matter, we have discussed or we have introduced a new uh, quantity called electric displacement, which is just related to the electric field and the polarization. And we also uh, slightly modify Gauss law uh, to include uh, dielectrics and polarization. So it's just the, the divergence of the electric displacement will give you the volume free current, uh, free uh, volume free charge density. So in this uh, lesson, we will also be doing uh, the same. We will introduce a new physical quantity which is related to the magnetic field and the magnetization, which is called the auxiliary field. So the auxiliary field is just basically the magnetic field for uh, magnetized objects. So in the same manner, with our discussion, we start with the volume current uh, density. And it's due to the surface bound currents, which is uh, because of the magnetization and the free current uh, density, which is not due to the magnetization. So if we take Ampere's law, then we can derive a new version for Ampere's law where H now is what we call the auxiliary field. It's equal to B over mu naught minus the magnetization. And this is now the Ampere's law for magnetized object. So the curl of the auxiliary field will give you the free current, uh, the free volume current density. And the integral form of that is this one. So H dot DL is equal to the free current enclosed. So note that free if there are no free current, it doesn't necessarily mean that there's no auxiliary field. It only means that the auxiliary field doesn't curl or it has no curl. So if you will recall from the magnetostatic boundary conditions, the magnetic field is actually discontinuous if you have surface uh, currents. So the parallel component, the perpendicular component is actually not affected and only the parallel component is affected. So the discontinuity with the parallel component of the magnetic field when it passes through a surface is equivalent to the surface current uh, density. So if there are no surface current density, then the magnetic field is uh, continuous. So in the same manner for the auxiliary field, it's also dependent on the free currents. Of surface free current density so it is discontinuous the auxiliary field is discontinuous if you have surface uh, free currents but if you don't have surface free current then the auxiliary the auxiliary field will be continuous so let's have an example so find the auxiliary field for a long copper rod carrying a uniformly distributed current uh, I. So in this case, the current I is uniformly distributed within the volume of this uh, copper uh, rod. So we are now trying to find the auxiliary field. So the auxiliary field inside and the auxiliary field outside. So for the auxiliary field inside, we take an Amperian loop. So since our current is along the axis of the cylinder or of the rod, then our Amperian loop will be a circle perpendicular to the axis, a circle with radius uh, S. That one. So that's our Amperian loop. So when we take the uh, Ampere, Ampere slope for magnetized object, so the integral form, the auxiliary field inside that DL is equal to mu naught uh, the free current uh, enclosed. Okay. Uh, in this case, by virtue of right hand rule, the auxiliary field will be curling around the current. So this is the direction of the auxiliary field. And this is also the direction of the magnetic field inside. 
So they will be curling around the curve. So the curve is in this direction. This is the direction of the magnetic field. And this is also the direction of the auxiliary field. So that our DL will also be in that direction. So this is our DL, a small differential length here. So H that uh, DL is just HDL. So this will just reduce to basically HDL. And we will assume that the magnetic, the auxiliary field is uniform. Uh, at the same distance at all points with the same distance s from the center of the axis so this will just be h inside times close integral of dl the close integral of dl is just the parameter of the circle which is 2 pi uh, s now what is the free current enclosed take note that we are only talking about a small volume here not the whole volume if we take into the, the whole volume of the copper rod, then the total current of that is I. But I is uniformly distributed within the volume. So how do we solve for the free current enclosed? So the free current J, F, is actually just the total current over the total cross-sectional area. So this cross-sectional cross area. So that area is actually the area of a circle, so pi total radius or the, the radius is squared pi r squared so that's the free current density and since it is uniform then it's also equal to the current enclosed over the area enclosed by our amperian loop the area enclosed by our amperian loop is a circle with area pi s squared so therefore we can now solve for the current the free current enclosed the free current enclosed will just then be so Cross multiply, pi cancels out, so you have i s squared over r squared. So this is our free current enclosed, i s squared over r squared. So this will give you i s squared over r squared. And the, the auxiliary field inside will be i s over 2 pi r squared. And since we already know its direction, it's in the phi hat direction, so this is phi hat. So this is the auxiliary field inside. So how about the auxiliary field outside? So it's much easier for the auxiliary field outside. So we use again Ampere's law for magnetized object. So mu not the free current enclosed. In this case, the free current enclosed, if we take our Ampere loop to be this one, it's now outside it's now including points outside it's still as a radius say s so the total free current enclosed is just i the total current so this is just mu naught times i so this is just h out a dl is still 2 pi s so you have mu naught i so the auxiliary field outside will just be mu naught i over 2 pi s and the direction is uh, p hat Sorry, there's no there's no mu nut. Sorry, sorry, had I, I I forgot. There's no mu nut in the Ampere's law for magnetized object. I'm very very sorry. It's just a free current enclosed. So free current enclosed, free current enclosed. So there's no mu nut. There's no permi uh, permeability in free space. It's I over two pi s. So this is the magnetic field. Sorry, auxiliary field outside. Okay. So if you get the magnetic field, so since you already know the auxiliary field, you can actually get the uh, magnetic field. So these are our auxiliary fields inside and outside. So if you try to get the auxiliary, field, sorry, magnetic field inside, then we use the formula solve for uh, B. So it's just mu nut, uh, the auxiliary field inside plus the magnetization. In this case, we are not given the magnetization. So we cannot actually explicitly solve for the magnetic field inside. So if we are given the magnetization, magnetization then uh, we can get the magnetic field inside. So will it affect, if we are given a magnetization, will it affect our answer here? 
No, because in in solving this, we only need the free current. We don't uh, need the bound current in solving for the auxiliary field. So it actually doesn't matter if the magnetization is uh, zero or not. How? But uh, but for the magnetic field outside, since outside there's no more matter to magnetize, so magnetization outside is zero. So therefore, if magnetization is zero, uh, the magnetic field is just uh, mu naught times h so mu naught times the h outside auxiliary field outside. So you multiply this by mu naught, and you will get mu naught i over two pi s uh, p hat. So which is basically just uh, the field of a straight current carrying wire mu naught i over two pi uh, s. Okay. So for our second example, we have a frozen in magnetization. So if you will recall, we also have uh, an electric electrostatic version of this, the frozen in polarization. So you have a pro frozen in uh, magnetization and along a cylinder. And this magnetization is actually uh, not uniform. It depends on S. So meaning a different uh, distance from the axis the magnetization is varying or different. So it's actually directly proportional to S, so meaning as you go uh, near the surface, or the maximum magnetization is actually at the surface, at S is equal to R. Okay. So using two methods, we are asked to find the magnetic field of this cylinder using two methods. So the first method is first by finding the bound uh, currents. So let's first find the bound currents. So in this case, uh, the bound currents, we have the volume bound currents. It's just the curl of the magnetization. So in this case, our uh, magnetization is along the z-axis. So we need to take the curl in cylindrical uh, coordinates. So this will just be uh, the partial of the z component of the magnetization with respect to s uh, p hat. Since we since our magnetization is only along or only has a z component it doesn't have an s or nor a, a phi component so this is only the third this is the only term that will survive in this uh, curl in cylindrical coordinates so derivative of this with respect to s and you will get negative k phi hat so you will notice that the volume current uh volume bound current density is actually uniform, it's negative kp. How about the, the uh, surface bound current density? So it's just m cross n hat. Now, at the surface, since this surface bound current is at the surface, so this means that the, the magnetization should be evaluated at s is equal to r. So basically this is kr, the radius, z hat cross with N hat. Our n hat again is perpendicular to the surface, so that is the s hat direction. And you will get kr z cross s is p. p hat. So you will notice that if the magnetization is in this direction, the currents, the volume current, the volume bound currents, and the surface bound currents are actually in the so the j is in that direction, the kb is also in that. Uh, direction. So the surface and the volume bound currents are in the p hat uh, direction. It's curling around the magnetization. So knowing this two, we can now solve for the magnetic field. Okay. So we use the old Ampere's law. Uh, this problem is actually similar to a solenoid the problem. So the magnetic field outside in this case is actually uh, zero. So you can use Ampere's law to show that one, but I will leave this uh, to you. So I'm just going to solve the magnetic field inside. So for the magnetic field inside, you have B, B, L. So again, our Amperian loop, since our direction of current is in that direction, then our Amperian loop will be this one. So we'll take B dot DL, but only this side of the loop will actually contribute because the magnetic field is actually in this direction. The magnetic field inside is actually in the same direction as the magnetization. So B dot DL of this is the only contributing uh, factor in this uh, Ampere's law. B dot DL of this, if this is your DL, so this is perp perpendicular to B, so the B dot DL is zero. Same with this side. 
And since in this side there's no magnetic field, so B dot is also zeros. Only this side of the loop will contribute. Okay. <clears throat> so this is mu naught current enclosed. So you will get the magnetic field inside is just DL. So DL is just the, this length here, which is just L. Uh, current enclosed. Current enclosed in this case will be due to uh, the sur uh, volume bound currents plus the surface bound uh, currents, KDL. JDA and K, J dot DA and K dot DL. So that one. That will be the current enclosed because the, in, the current enclosed in this loop will be surf, the surface current here and there are also volume current uh, here. Okay, so you already have JB, DA in this case is, is just a uh, SDSDP, DL will just be RDP. So DL is RDP, RDP, and this. DA is just S, D, S, uh, D, P. You evaluate S from 0 to R, you evaluate P from 0 to 2 pi, and you will get an answer of KSL. So the answer of this is KSL. KSL. So this is this is basically, sorry, capital L. We are using capital L for the length. So basically this is mu naught. KSL, so magnetic field inside will be uh, mu naught KS, and since it is in the same direction as the uh, magnetization, so this is also in the z hat axis. But KS z hat is just uh, your magnetization, so basically it's mu naught M. So you will notice that we 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 keep coming back to this result mu naught M. So the magnetic field inside for a cylindrical, uh, it doesn't matter if your magnetization is along the axis or along the surface of the cylinder, you still get mu naught m for the magnetic field inside. The magnetic field outside is zero. Now for the second, uh, for the second solution, we use the Ampere's law for magnetized uh, objects. So if you use Ampere's law for magnetized objects, so you will have H uh, inside the DL is equal to the free current enclosed. So in this case, since this object is magnetized, there are actually no free currents, only bound currents. This is equal to uh, zero, meaning uh, H inside is equal to zero. And it, and it goes to follow that the auxiliary field outside is also zero, meaning the magnetic field will just be equal to so since the magnetic field is mu naught uh, h plus m this is our formula so if h is zero then the magnetic field is just mu naught m so inside is mu naught m so inside it's mu naught m outside since there's no magnetization and h is also zero then outside it's zero so you will notice this problem is very much easier if you use Ampere's law for uh, magnetized objects. So that one, instead of sol solving for the bound currents, you can go directly to uh, Ampere's law for magnetized objects. Okay. So these are our results. So for our last example, we have a magnetized sphere with a cavity. So actually, we did a similar uh, example when we discussed about, uh, or in electrostatics, we have a polarized sphere with cavity. So it's basically the same. So you, ha you have a magnetized sphere, and then you create a cavity inside the sphere. And you are asked to find the magnetic field and the auxiliary field inside the cavity so, that one. so this problem in, in if you will recall our solution to the polarized sphere with the cavity is basically a superposition of two spheres so you have one sphere where the magnetic field and magnetization is in that direction and you have a smaller sphere 
where the, magnet where the magnetization is in the opposite direction. So if you superimpose these two spheres, then at the center, there will, uh, the magnetization will actually cancel out. So there will be zero magnetization. When you superimpose this sphere, so there's a magnetization up, there's a magnetization down, they have the same uh, magnitude but opposite in direction. So there will be no magnetization. So magnetization in the cavity is zero because there's no matter to magnetize there. So take note, magnetization depends on, on, on if there's a material to be magnetized. So superposition of this one. So if we solve for letter A, the magnetic field at the cavity will just then be, so the magnetic field of the large sphere plus the magnetic field of uh, this one. <clears throat> So the magnetic field of this one, if you will recall, in our previous problem, we have actually solved the magnetic field of a magnetized, a uniformly magnetized sphere. And the answer to that is two-third unit M. But since our magnetization is in the opposite direction, so the magnetic field is also in the opposite direction. It will be negative two-thirds uh, unit M. To signify that <clears throat> uh, the monetization of this is negative of this, negative unit. Okay. So that this is now the monetic field. It's basically B naught minus two thirds mu naught M. Okay. So how about the auxiliary field? So inside the cavity, the magnetization is zero. So therefore, the auxiliary field is just B over uh, mu net. So we have our magnetic field inside the cavity. So it's basically uh, B net over mu net minus two thirds M. And If you write it like this, B naught over mu naught minus M plus one third M, this term is actually the original auxiliary uh, field. So B naught over mu naught minus M is actually H naught, the original uh, auxiliary field of the sphere without the cavity. So basically, uh, you will get uh, H naught plus one third M. So where H naught is the auxiliary field, this is the auxiliary field uh, for a sphere without a cavity. The original uh, auxiliary field. That one. Okay, so that ends our uh, discussion on the lesson on auxiliary fields. So auxiliary fields is basically just a magnetic field. So it's the magnetic counterpart of the electric uh, displacement. So the next lesson, which will be the last lesson for this chapter, will be all about uh, the permeability and the susceptibility. So in uh, electrostatics, we have discussed about electric susceptibility and the electric and uh, the permittivity. And the magnetic counterpart of that is the magnetic susceptibility and the permeability. So I will see you again in the next lesson.